Critique groups are an integral and essential part of your writing journey. Having a reader to look over your work before you try to submit it will save you so much heartache. It might bruise your ego a little bit, but in the long run, it's so completely worth it. My first novel that I ever published was a mistake. It was not ready in any regard at all. And I honestly am quite embarrassed by its existence on the shelves of most of my family. So I wanted to show a little bit today about what I've learned from my critique group. As, as I go back through this old novel um, with fresh eyes, I have not read this story in probably five, six years, something like that. And so I just wanted to pretend that it's somebody else's writing for today and just apply a few line edits and a few critiques about the writing itself. And I thought this might be useful to you just so that you can see the benefits of having somebody, anybody just to read your work. Writers especially who already know all of these tricks and such. Um, my critique group is on critiquecircle.com. I'm not affiliated with them. I'm not paid by them. That's just who I use. There is a local uh, Writers Guild near me, but with a kid, I have trouble making it out there to any meetings whatsoever. So I always use the online resources. All right, so to the story. Oh my word, this stinking story. Anyways, um, yeah, I have, I have issues with the story. I still, I look back on it and I just, I do not enjoy thinking about it because it was a big mistake and it was something that I just didn't know if I'd been plugged into our community of writers, I could have saved myself a lot of trouble. All right, so prologue. Now, the first thing you got to know about prologues is if it can be eliminated from your story, do it. There's no reason to keep a prologue if it doesn't add a darn thing. And this one, it doesn't really add anything to the story. It's extremely vague. It doesn't do much character development. And the payoff is just not that, it's just not that great of a payoff. So while people don't even read the prologues, so it might be good just to eliminate it. Let's read it. So the green is where I've come back and made little comments on it. I'm just going to read, since the prologue is only two paragraphs, I'm going to just read the prologue as it is, and then we'll talk about it. He ran. Only one thought filled his mind, escape. A dog howled in the distance. They had found his trail. Another howl, closer this time. How are they gaining ground so fast? He stole a glance over his shoulder and tripped over a root. He started rolling uncontrollably down the slippery slope. The wet leaves gave him no traction. He fell hopelessly towards the ravine. His hands reached out to grab something, anything. He found a root and held onto it with all of his might, but as he, he began to pull himself up, it snapped. He plummeted toward the river, too terrified to scream. Now, one thing that I did notice is that there was a lot of active verbs through this, which is good. You want as many active verbs as possible. They're very strong. Uh, so an inactive verb would be like, he was running, or uh, he fell, he was pushed towards the river, or something like that. You know, So he ran, strong verb. Filled his mind, a dog howled. Had found. There you go. That's a good example of passive. They had found his trail. Uh, sometimes you have to keep those in. Um, there's a, a good ratio. I don't know what it is off the top of my head, but the fewer the better. Another howl closer this time. Um, so that is something that I did notice. There's a lot of strong verbs through there. We'll get back to that in a minute. Uh, he ran. Okay. So another thing you need to know about these, this prologue is that the opening is extremely cliche. Some random person running through the woods. We don't know who they are. I guess we should be sympathizing with them or feeling their terror, but we're not really that scared because we don't know them. We don't know anything about the situation. Um, this comes from somebody that watched too many movies. Yeah. How many movies start like that? A lot. A lot of movies start like that. But there you go. He ran. Very vague. We're running where? Track through the mall? Through the forest. I know it's through the forest because I wrote it. Um, also very weak POV, POV camera angle, which is what I'm, I mean, it's, it's like somebody's filming this situation going down is how it's written. Uh, POV is very important nowadays. They really want our, these agents and publishers and stuff like that are really looking to see behind the eyes of the character. So you need to get back into their, into their body. So as the heart pounding, that's a little cliche, uh, maybe a stitch in their side where they just haven't having trouble with a stitch and just hurting are they sweating is there tears are they having to swat at their eyes you know really get into those moments and really think about how would it feel to be running blindly through the woods um running away from somebody you're here that is, is they're terrifying you're more afraid of of them than running to a tree you know 
Uh, branches tearing at his pants. Again, that's a little cliche, the branches tearing, so you might can think of something a little better. That's just on the fly. Only one thought filled his mind. Escape. I'll show that's cliche. Um, so this was not too bad of a, a POV. Dog howled in the distance. They had found his trail. Another howl, closer this time. How are they gaining crowns so fast? It's not, it's not too bad. Uh, as it concerns POV. Also, you got the strong verbs. He stole a glance over his shoulder and tripped over a root. Now we're kind of out of our POV. I would like to see more, you know, how does it feel to get your foot stuck? Does it twist to the side? Does it hold you back? You know, what, what does that mean? Like, does it, you just flip and face down, you know? Um, I'm trying to get from a face down frontal whack to a roll. Because the next part is he started rolling. It's like, you know, the, trying to picture the physics in my mind on that one. He started. Started needs to be go, needs to go away. I think I have that down here. He started rolling. Try avoiding startings unless you have to. Like so, maybe somebody starts an action and the action is interrupted. That would be fine to say they started. He rolled. A, he rolled down the slippery slope. Slippery slope. Little cliche. Uncontrollably. Adverb. Bad. So how would we write this sentence a little bit better? Because because there's another problem. He stole. He started, the wet leaves gave, his hands reached. Now, I would give a little bit of grace through this section about the sentence structure. Usually you want to alter your sentence structure so that you have a little bit more uh, entry. The writing seems better in that regard. Uh, this is an action sequence. And so shorter sentences, you know, it helps with your pacing of the words. So this snap, 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 snap. So less flowery writing would be appropriate here. But still, I don't know, I would try to consider something else. Perhaps, let's see. His hands floundered. Floundered against the slick leaves. He tumbled. The... Or something like that. I don't know if it's actually going to type that for me because uh, I'm doing a lot of things on my little laptop right now. There it goes. Uh, his hands floundered against the slick leaves he tumbled towards the cliff. Okay, if I thought about it longer, I could probably come up with something a little bit better than that. But that's not bad for right off the fly. Um, tumbled towards the cliff. So now we, we don't even have to have tumbled is stronger than rolling. Um and the slick leaves, and so slick, instead of slippery slope, we got slick leaves. Hands floundering, you can just kind of, that's more POV um, helpful. The wet leaves gave him no traction. Unnecessary if you have uh, the slick leaves and tumbling. Clearly he's he's falling. He fell helplessly. Yeah, we got it, okay? Yeah, we don't need the help hopelessly too. Hands, hands grabbed reached out to grab something, anything. I've already covered that with his hands. Okay, see, basically I've taken this. Wait, no, sorry, this, this, this. Three sentences wrapped into this one sentence, this nice little strong sentence right there. Actually, I could make it better, but I'm not going to try. And then he found a root. Ah, oh, try to avoid things like found. Um, he found himself. How often do you walk into a room and find yourself? Unless you got dementia? Probably not that often. Or, like, that would seem that if you're disoriented or somebody pulls a blindfold off of you or something, like you could find yourself somewhere. Well, he's not finding himself in that situation. He found a root and held onto the. Okay, so yeah, I could see him finding a root. What about. Um. See, I don't want to say his hands, because that would echo his hands up here. Hmm. He grasped would be better. Instead of found. Um, I would take he grasped. Or um, his fingers wedged into the... That would hurt. Ooh, whoo, whoo. His fingers wedged into the into a root or um, something like that, you know, so he grasped something a little bit stronger. As he began to pull himself up, it snapped. He plummeted towards the river, too terrified to scream. That works. That last sentence works. But you can see what we're doing here is we're just mainly adding a lot more strong verbs through this section. 
Uh, we're trying to cut down our word count a little bit. Um, really just painting a picture from the mind's eye of our character about really a lot of sensation. See, another good thing to add, what are some smells as he's going through? Which, you know, maybe you would argue is an action sequence. He may not be smelling stuff, you know. I would say that's fine. Um, so maybe in your more quiet scenes, like if what if he was stranded there holding that root for a very long time? His face would be flat against the moss, against the, the decaying leaves. And what would that smell like? That earthy kind of rotted smell. And you can really use those sensory things to put your, your uh, reader into that place. Uh, so that's just a few ideas. Um, visuals. There's no visuals through here. I mean, we know there's a ravine here because he's following towards it i guess which that's our first clue as a reader that we're outside oh, well, I get, okay so i guess there's there's tripping over roots and stuff like that but we have no not even a rough outline of the terrain through this entire section which is a little concerning so yeah very very vague overall he ran the one mind fell asleep thought filled his mind. There's just not much here. So yeah, I would, this whole prologue, which it, okay, the prologue actually continues down to the next section. Is this is a dog. This is the person that's chasing and follows him. He pulls out an arrow. So I guess that gives us a hint as to what the timeline is, is that there's people with arrows instead of guns. Um, so with a dog, what kind of dog? Is it a, is it a German Shepherd? Is it a hound? Um, another bad adverb. He waited silently. Yeah, so there's a lot of things that can be worked on through this section. And again, I, this is stuff I've picked up just working with other critique partners and stuff like that. But I sent this thing out to be published at a Vanity Press Publishing and of course they they took my money gladly um spent thousand it was probably about three thousand dollars to get this piece of crap book out there and published to not sell really any after that okay first off i didn't know how to market and second of all i expected my publisher to do something i didn't know what a vanity publisher is see another video for that one so if you're out there and you're writing and you aren't plugged into these communities, you need to find somebody to talk to you about with this and to really, really do your research on this before you just take your whatever you wrote when you were 16 years old, hand it to a publishing house and say, hey, publish this for me. Um, there's so much you can learn from different writers. But yeah, this is just an example in a nutshell. I hope you've learned a lot of these things, um, such as POV about those um, very strong active verbs. So I hope this video has been useful to you. Um, be sure to like and subscribe for more content. I have a website, rwhague.com. Hague is spelled H-A-G-U-E. You can see it, rwhague.com. I'll probably put a link in the description. Um, I've got a contact me page. If you are interested in having me critique some of your work, I'm fine with doing that as well. Um, I'd like to start doing something about critiquing here on my page um, in the near future. But yeah, this is, yeah, this, I, I just look at this and it's just such a shame to think that I wasted a lot of time, a lot of heart, a lot of money on um, this crappy manuscript. Like I know it's crappy because I've written things so much better than this pile of junk since then. Uh, the story structure is pathetic. Um, it's very cliche in several places. Um, but yeah, that's, that's, that's what I spent my money on. Yay me. I'm going to show just a little bit of a snippet here. Um, I had this pulled up, but I guess it reset. Sorry, bear with me for just a second about some, um, of my more recent writing. Set the stage for just a second. Oh lordy, what is it doing? Let's see if I can edit that out. Alright. 
Olivia, I'm just going to read this. It's a lot smoother. Um, it's been critiqued. It's been gotten a lot of uh, feedback. And I think this is so much better. Olivia had never seen Gavin like this before. Five times now he had checked his curls at the tips of his fingers and he kept adjusting the buttons on his weight coast. Eno enough already, she cried, jamming her elbow into his ribs. I should have worn the hat, said Gavin. My hair is all over the place after the rain and a hat would have at least contained it. You don't need a hat. Although, what, cried Gavin, stopping so suddenly that a man nearly ran into him. The man, a factory worker with grease and soot clinging to his face, cursed his siblings as he stomped off the sidewalk and around them. The siblings were out of place in this part of town despite their best efforts to blend in. Perhaps it was the newness of their clothes or the cleanliness of their faces that gave them away, but more than one person has squinted upon seeing them pass. While it was unlikely that the common folk of this quarter knew would recognize them, Olivia brushed her fingers against the money pouch tied at her waist to, at her hip to ensure its presence. It's just smoother. Um, you have a very strong sense of place. You know that it's um, factory workers, that they've got grease and soot. These two don't belong, although they're wearing the clothes. There's just a lot more clarity into the story. And um, I've got a lot of credit to be given to my critique partners and my alpha readers. And my, well, and I've got this out with a couple of beta readers, too. Um, I'm looking forward to hearing what they say about it, about the story structure. And it's just the community is so much better. Um, when you're not doing this alone. So I really encourage you to get into a, a um, into a critique group of some sort. Again, like, share, subscribe, whatever. Do those things. Um, CritiqueCircle.com is what I use. Again, I'm not affiliated. I don't get paid or anything like that. Um, or if you would like me just to look at your stories and just give it a little edit, a little um, critique, go to my website. I'll have a link in the description. And um, yeah.